asked to read a proclamation from the state of New Mexico executive office, Santa Fe, New Mexico. So please stay with me. Whereas New Mexico women of every background have led movements for social change, not only to secure their own right of suffrage and equal opportunity, but also to create an impartial and just society for all. And whereas countless New Mexico women work for suffrage through the participation in state and local chapters of the General Federation of Women's Clubs, the Women's Christian Temperance Union, the National American Women's Suffrage Association, the Congressional Union, later the National Women's Party, as well as in churches, school halls, and across backyard fences. And whereas many women in communities of color in New Mexico were unable to participate in the suffrage movement and waited many years for laws to be passed in order to exercise their right to vote freely. And whereas Cora Armstrong Kellum, Deanne Hopton, Lindsay, Ada McPherson Morley, and Nina Otero Warren led efforts in New Mexico for women's suffrage and US Senator Andrea S. Jones of New Mexico championed the 19th Amendment in, Co Amendment in Congress as chairman of the Select Committee on Women's Suffrage, and whereas New Mexico ratified the 19th Amendment on February 21st, 1920, making this the 100th anniversary of the year our state acknowledged that the vote should not be denied on the basis of gender, a monumental step in the continuing pursuit of full, unhindered, and unrestricted equality for all people. And whereas we celebrate this centennial by reaffirming, reaffirming New Mexico's commitment to achieving full equality for all women in every sphere, social, economic, and political. Now therefore, I, this is the gover governor speaking, not me. <laughs> Michelle Lujan Grisham, governor of the state of New Mexico, do hereby proclaim 2020 <coughs> as Women's Suffrage Centennial Year. Mother Teresa of Calcutta. I cannot pronounce her real name, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll try. Um, she was born, um, well, her name was Mary Teresa Bojatsu. Um, she was born in 1910, um, died in 1997. We all know her as Mother Teresa. She's on, honored by the Catholic Church as a saint now. Um, she was a poet, dramatist, scholar, a nun, and mainly an outstanding writer of the Latin American colonial period and of the Hispanic Baroque. Um, as a youngster, she thirsted for knowledge and she had little access to formal education and was entirely self-taught. She was born out of wedlock to a family of modest means. In fact, um, nobody was sure who her father was till later on that information was entered into a document her mother was Criolla, Creole, meaning Spanish, but born in the Americas, and her father was Spanish. Um, her intelligence got the attention of the Viceroy, Antonio Sebastián de Toledo, Marquez de Mancera, and he invited her to his court as a lady in waiting in 1664. This was a way to get somebody married off, okay? Um, but she was so intelligent, he had her knowledge tested by some 40 noted scholars. She was definitely a brave woman from what we learned uh, in the poem. Sounds to me like she's a bit of a type A personality, okay? She had great leadership skills, and on more than one occasion, she had to motivate the soldiers when they were starting to lose heart. They were scared, they were losing their faith in the expedition, many were threatening to leave and go back south, but um, we have accounts where she's the one who would say, what are you all, a bunch of sissies? We have to see this through, this is a mission we're on. There was even a time when they were being attacked uh, by native warriors and she rallied the soldiers to fight on. So I got that image from the cover of a Origins of New Mexico Families by Jose Cisneros. The drawing is by him. Uh, I don't know what she looked like, but he drew behind Guanyate some of the colonists. So I'm like, well, maybe that's her. Maybe that's one of the woodcut images of her, but I don't like them. They make her look kind of weird, in my opinion. And uh, this is a woman who's quite impressive. Um, she was born around 1800 in Mexico, in Sonora. 
Um, she was a wealthy gambler. She owned a gambling house and saloon right over now what we call Burro Alley. You know where you walk between uh, San Francisco and Palace? That's where her place was. Um, <coughs> she's one of the most infamous women in New Mexico history. Uh, born in the Baviste Valley of Sonora to Juan Ignacio Barcelo and Dolores, either Herrero or Herrera. Um, she started gambling around 1825 and was known as a proficient monte dealer. Um, I, I like monte because my grandpa played monte. And um, like Dona Dules, that was her nickname, her father was a heck of a gambler too. Um, she was literate, shrewd, and an independent businesswoman who had amassed wealth and power as a Mexican woman. She said that she had accumulated by my own labor and exertions her wealth, and with money earned from her gambling house, she supported her many adopted children. I'm not gonna say much about her because we already have somebody coming to talk, but let's just say this much. Uh, she's quite amazing. She was a suffragist, educator, politician, entrepreneur, writer. She was born in 1881 near Los Lunas. She studied at St. Vincent's Academy in Albuquerque and then went to Maryville College of the Sacred Heart in St. Louis, Missouri. I find fascinating all of these women. About, uh, the history of witchcraft in New Mexico and she was very complimentary, very nice. She was born in 1910 in Galisteo, New Mexico. Um, in 1929, she founded the Colonial Hispanic Craft School. That was a vocational school uh, founded during the Great Depression in order to uh, preserve important and vulnerable Hispanic arts, such as weaving, leatherworking, and furniture making. Um, I think we're gonna have a talk at some point in the next couple months by one of uh, a good friend of mine here in the archives on that very subject. Stay tuned. In 1936, when Ortiz y Pino was elected to the New Mexico House of Representatives at the age of 26, she became the sixth generation of her family to serve in the legislature. She was the youngest American woman elected to state office and had two subsequent terms in 1938 and 1940. In 1941, she became the first woman majority whip in a state I started doing my genealogy. My dad, his father, Massimiano Martinez, was not happy about that. He said in Spanish, what's this guy looking for? What's he digging into? Well, it turned out that his dad, Eliseo Martinez, was born out of wedlock. Look, I want to get started with that, OK? Can you please come up here? Preserve documents uh, and make them available to the public through um, finding guides or the internet. Um, we have some of these uh, brochures in the back and a cool bookmark, look at that. If you get these, uh, talk to that guy back there. Raise your hand, Thomas Schumacher. He's our grants administrator. He also deals with our scholars program. Uh, we give every year, we give uh, scholars uh, from universities, a vocational, uh, people doing family history, land grant, any kind of history here in New Mexico, we give thousands 